Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at the inverting amplifier. Now as I've said in the previous videos, it is absolutely essential that you understand everything that's come before about op amps before you go on to this. So if you have any questions at all, do look back over that. But assuming that you're happy, let's crack on. Okay, so what I've got here is the basic uh, layout of an inverting amplifier. So you can see um, that what I have is I still have uh, an input here, which is V in. But what I've done now is I've added some resistors to this device. Uh, and I've also connected now my non-inverting input to ground. So what effect is all this going to have on my circuit? Well, let's go back and re remind ourselves of some key things from our previous lesson. The first one we came across was when we looked at negative feedback, we said that if there is negative feedback in an op-amp circuit, in that case the op-amp will adjust V out to be whatever it needs to be in order to make the inverting and non-inverting inputs show the same potential. Now, obviously that's subject to the fact that the op-amp can't be saturated, so V out can, can never be more than the uh, supply voltage. But assuming that everything's working as expected, uh, that's what the op-amp will do. It will, If V out needs to become a greater number in order to make v, uh, uh, v inverting and V inverting the same, that's exactly what the output will do. It will change as it needs to. So in this instance, we have the non-inverting input connected to uh, ground. So that means, if you remember, that we have point P. So I can say that in this case, point P will have a potential of approximately zero volts. And as we discussed last time, it won't be exactly zero volts, but it will oscillate around at nearly zero volts. So this is a virtual Earth, uh, which again, or the virtual Earth approximation. If you're unsure about how we got that, you must go back uh, and check it, okay? Uh, because it's really, really important. Now there are two other features of an ideal op-amp that I'm going to look at before we go further. So what we need to remember is that an ideal op-amp has an infinite input resistance and zero output resistance. So with all these facts in mind, we can start to look at what's going on. So the first thing I want to think about today is the current that goes in. So, we are going to have a current entering my op-amp through I in. Now, because of this point, the idea of infinite input resistance, what I can say is that the current entering the op-amp must be zero. In that case, the only path that the current can take is this one. It must go through my feedback loop and join the output like that. So all of these currents are going to be I in. So what that means is that I can say that the current in R in is equal to the current in R F. What does that mean? Well, straight away you can start to use Kirchhoff's laws. Now Kirchhoff's second law uh, or Ohm's law rather, so let's use Ohm's law. Uh, Ohm's law tells us that the potential drop across something is equal to voltage times current. In other words, V is equal to I times R. So if we think about R in, I'm saying that at this point my potential is V in, and at P it's zero. Therefore I can say that the voltage across R in is equal to V in because, or rather I suppose it's V in take away zero, which is V in. Um, that also means that I can say therefore that V in is equal to I in multiplied by R in. That's just from Ohm's law. I've now said if it's going from the input voltage to zero, it must be going to zero, therefore uh, the voltage drop across it is V in, and I know from Ohm's law that V is I R. So I've got R, so I can calculate that. If I look at R F, well, across R F I'm going from zero to 
v out. Obviously at this point I will have potential v out. So therefore I can say that the potential across Rf is 0 take away v out which is minus v out. Um, and that does make sense. We we'll have negative feedback. Uh, so I would expect to have, uh, if I have a positive voltage going in, in other words, current that does flow in that direction, I'd expect a negative voltage out anyway. So this is all making logical sense. But again, using Ohm's law, I can say that V out is equal to the current through the resistor multiplied by its resistance RF. And I know because I've said from this red line that the current through both the resistors must be the same, I can say the current is I in. Now if we come back to one of the key equations we need, we need to remember that the gain of any system is equal to V out over V in. I've written that really badly so I'll rewrite it. V out over V in. So with that in mind, I'm just going to divide these two by each other. So I can say V out or negative V out divided by V in is equal to I in R F divided by I in R in. So if I just do some rearranging, I can see that these two cancel. So I get V out over V in is equal to negative RF over R in. And this is a key thing I'm going to need to understand. What is this telling us? It's telling me that by controlling the combination of these two resistors, I can very easily control the gain of this amplifier. And what we will do in lessons is we will see that whatever input voltage you put, you can adjust these resistors so that you get a desired output that's a number of factors bigger. In other words, it has a certain gain. And just a little spoiler alert, one of the things that you could start to do is make one of these variable resistors. And that's exactly how old style amplifiers on a stereo system works. You can vary the voltage uh, or the resistance of one of these, or indeed both of them. You could use them as a potential divider if you wanted to. Um, and that's going to straight away allow you to control the gain very, very precisely. This is a skill that you need to be able to uh, repeat during your exam, so make sure that you're really, really confident with it and it makes total sense to you. Uh, and we'll go through it a lot in our lesson.